Welcome to The Good, The Scads and The Rugby with our good friends at Vodafone. We are here at sunny Franklin's Gardens, the new home of Loughborough Lightning. I am buzzing to show you around. The town of Northampton has rolled out the purple, no, the green carpet. They have rolled out the purple carpet. Yes. Yeah, they brought the, out the purple, the purple carpet. carpet. Yeah, yes, because the Loughborough Lightning are in town. Yes. Um, now, uh, this is important context for you. If you missed the episode where we went all the way uh, to the Forest of Dean to go visit Mo <laughs> at home, um, we went to the Alpas Arena. It was um, well, it wasn't a lovely weather day, but it was a lovely day. Tons of warmth. Got to catch up with all the Gloucester Heartbreak girls. And today we're doing uh, the basically the return leg of this. A big old rivalry between your two sides. Yes. Um, our friend Mo Hunt is in the back there getting ready for a big game Chirps today. Chirps in a way already. Chirps are ready and warmed up. <laughs> we are going to be joined a little later by two of our Scazzy Legs' teammates. Uh, you met them previously uh, when we just had them on a remote link. Uh, Helen Nelson, Rachel Malcolm, two Scottish girls. Yes. Nelly and Scotty. Nelly and Scotty. Um, and today we're going to hang out with them IRL, BTS. Yeah. In real life? In real life, behind the scenes. Yes. Somebody wrote BTS on the group and I was like, yeah, I've got this, I've got this. And I got it. I didn't have to text anybody. We're going yeah. deep in BTS today. We're going very deep, yeah. Um, shall we take a stroll? Yes, let's. So we can properly BTS <laughs> here at Franklin's Garden. <laughs> On the way here, I just spotted something. Will you turn around? I found my hashtag inner warrior <laughs> at Loughborough University, loughboroughsport.com forward slash lightning rugby. Are you walking, talking billboard? Yeah, you? basically. <laughs> Do you know how much they pay me to work there, Jacob? <laughs> hashtag inner warrior. <laughs> yeah, I think inner warrior was a campaign that ran a few, I don't know, a few years ago. Mm. Just trying to you're get people to play, start. Mm. Loved it. And we an obviously, yeah, yeah, we ran some camps. Okay, love that. Now, um, this is the future, speaking of timelines. We're standing in front of the Northampton Saints High Performance Centre, which on the outside looks like the distribution facility of your local supermarket, <laughs> if you're from the southern hemisphere like me and we don't have indoor pitches. But there is a, um, well, it's, there's a pitch in there. Yeah, I've not actually been in. I've not seen this yet. I've so seen it being built over the last however many months. But yeah, this is my, it's brand new to Northampton and brand new to me, so. So it's like a recce. Yeah. So you guys have this partnership, let's walk. You guys have this partnership with Northampton Saints now. Yes. Where the two of you are sharing more and more of your facilities. How does that work? Yeah, so we've, we've played a lot of home games here this season and we're certainly going to try and do the same next season. Um, but yeah, the partnership is, it's been up and running for a couple of years, but obviously still finding its feet. And then as of next season, it will be in that new round of the Premiership, it will be really flying. Um, we'll still train a lot at Loughborough, but hopefully playing most of our games here and then obviously have access to these sorts of facilities so that when the snow comes in the winter, you can still train because it's down in this part of the world, Amber, you need, uh, you need indoor facilities where possible. How good is this? It smells, it does smell brand new. It smells like no one's trained here yeah. yet. <laughs> but it's such a cool facility. It's half a pitch. Um, yeah, full width, full length of half a pitch. You probably, you wouldn't be able to kick in here or anything like that, but you'd survive. But it just means that you can do skill sessions. You know, the days where it's rained for like two weeks in a row and you just want to do some really good catch pass stuff. Mm. Come in here. If you need to train fizz, fizz, fizz. for a day like today, yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, because exactly. Because in here, this feels basically like you're replicating the conditions. Yes, yeah, 100%. And obviously with the, the fake turf, the 4G, um, there's no risk of overusing it or anything like that. So, yeah, just come and get stuck in. So cool. It smells, I love this smell. Do you not like this smell? No. No? <laughs> no, not particularly, no. I mean, there are nicer smells. Bacon smells better. Coffee smells better. But it's like new. It's, you know, like that, when you, honestly, when you open a new pair of trainers, I can't uh, relate. I can't remember when last I had new trainers. <laughs> I need to think of better analogies for you, don't I? <laughs> Sports equipment and new trainers. Sports equipment and new trainers. Um, but I love this for you, and I yeah, can fun. see how it's going to be useful. Yeah, so good. Come on, inner warrior. <laughs> 
Um, this area looks like it could get quite festive. The crooked hooker is behind us. Um, tell me about the water that we are hearing. It sounds like an avalanche of water, but it's it actually does. just a pond with three little fountains in it. Yeah. yeah. Fun facts, that is the only original feature here from 1880, apparently. 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 And it helps feed the sprinkler system to help water the pitch. Uh, Franklin's Gardens, renowned for its pitch, real grass, not many of those around anymore, feeds that. And then when it drains out, it comes back in. So it's this lovely cyclical water cycle. You know I love a bit of nature and all, all things agriculture. How Farmer, good! Farmer's Garrett yeah. has just given us a little How good. The size of that tree tells me it might also be original. It yes. is monstrous. Yes. Um, there was a rumour that there was someone in a boat that used to when, when this oh, yeah. was a temporary stand. Yeah, apparently when it was temporary stand it was a lot shorter. So obviously when kicks at goal happened they'd come over, land in the water. So it was somebody's job in a rowing boat to go and pick out the ball, balls and pass them back. Why, How funny. Why is your teammate scampering past quietly? She's scuttling off. Probably because she's, she's, like, like, she's late. She's like, <laughs> don't mind me. <laughs> she's like, one, I want to avoid the camera, but also I'm really late, so <laughs> I've got to keep moving. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Um, <coughs> I, I did snoop around a little bit, and the gym is up here. Yeah, the case. gym's gym's on the second floor. I never understand that when it's upstairs. But yeah, That's evil. Yes. Yeah, I know. Go in there. Yeah, we've been in there a few times. Um, Nice facility, everything you need. You know, not not kind of one of these new fancy ones. It's kind of you know rugby at its heart. It's a bit sawdust, but it's kind of nice. Um, has some good vibes in there. Very good sound system, which is always the most important thing. Let's to be play honest. your country on. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then here we are. Look at this. Beautiful. Fed by the pond outside. Look at the green. Look at the greenness. <laughs> and when it's um, when the pond's empty. Yeah. No idea. Not sure about that. That goes beyond my realm of uh, <laughs> realm of knowledge. <laughs> here is a here is a Norse fact. Go on. Ellis Park Stadium in Johannesburg, where the '95 Rugby World Cup final was played, and the Lions are based, has a spring underneath it, and they bottle the water. Really? Yeah. Good and fact. And it is in the actual heart of Johannesburg, in the most dangerous they part sell of the it. city. I'm getting Only Fools and Horses vibes. It's have you seen that episode? You've not seen Only Fools and Horses, have you? We need to continue your English education. I have just Back finished. Spring. I have just oh, finished Gavin and Stacey, okay? Okay. I am just down with what's occurring. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> That's so funny. But yeah, I mean, Only Fools and Horses is one you need to go back and need to get yeah. onto next. 100%. Alex Matthews, she'll be out here for hours as well, moving. Hey, Hi girl. Alex. Oh, girl, yeah. There I was saying go. that about Santa earlier, and now you're that, you're that person. Zoom in on Saga's face. Hi. Morning, Sadia. <laughs> and then this is the tunnel. So the last memory you have of actually playing here was? Um, a good one? Yes, no? No, not a good one. It's when I hurt my neck. So it was just after Christmas we played um, Wasps. And oh. yeah, unfortunately I came up after about 50 minutes, so it wasn't the best. But nonetheless, beautiful place to play. The pitch is unbelievable, especially on a day like today. It'll be sensational. Look at this. Oh. Own little sections, loads of room, shorts laid out, shirts laid out, little supplements, recovery gels. Yazoo's there, new. Oh, sugar. The milkies. Yeah, and they must be for after the game, I reckon. So, is all of this for after the game? No, these will be for during the game. Energy gels. Oh. Maybe one beforehand, one at half time. There'll be some caffeine gum somewhere. The girls normally smash that in. Socks, shorts. GPS, ready to go. Yeah. Helena Rowland. Big dog's back today. <laughs> Big dog is back today. Um, but yeah, otherwise, this is it. The music will go on when the girls get in. Ooh. And it'll be carnage. Proper. Uh, who's who's blasting the tunes in your team? Might be Bryony Field. Okay. Yeah. What's Questionable. On the, what's on the playlist? <laughs> well, they did. They've done one of those shared ones where everyone chips in. But if it's just her music, some of it is a bit. It's a bit young for me. A bit young. A bit young. You know what I mean. What does that mean? It's a bit young and heavy. Like. Don't understand it. It's no words. Guitars heavy or just beat heavy? Like rap heavy. Rap heavy. Yeah. You have never sounded 45 more than you just did right now. You just said rap that heavy. That sounds surprising. <laughs> uh, Toodle Pip just dropped rap <laughs> as a music genre. Um, your contribution? A bit of country? 
bit of country. To be fair, actually, because we've got a biggest, big Scottish contingent, we actually have quite a lot of Scottish songs that play. Scottish Some, songs? Sometimes there's so like a Scottish Betty changing Clyro. room. No, like uh, Jerry Cinnamon. Is that his name? Yeah. Girl. Have you ever heard Girl? No. I'll play them for you later. Okay. Some of them are good. Okay. Uh, who is the most intense in here of all of these Ooh. names? Who's the serious one? I don't think we've got too many serious people. Like, no one's punching a wall? No, not really. No seriously intense, scary, don't talk to me? I'd say Sadia, but she's also very chill. Um, <laughs> Below is very funny, um, USA International. She'll basically be asleep until two minutes before the meeting and then she'll just come to life. Yeah. Asleep? <laughs> Literally asleep. Like on her arms she'll asleep? Have, pretty much, she'll bring her face mask and she'll just have it on and then it'll be like, right, the meeting's happening and then she'll just like take it off and be like, yo. <laughs> so she just conserves energy yeah. until the very last the minute. Very last She's minute. like the energy version of Mo on the little uh, kick bike. Yes. Yeah. 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 Doesn't expend Super any chill. of it on you, on you no. folks. No. Um, so where are you <coughs> going to be today? When everyone's in here, do you just hang outside now? No, no, I'll probably be in this bit next door. So in the physio room, where everyone gets strapped. Doing so what? So I'll just have put my boots on over here. I'll jump in here when, you know, people might need a little bit of entertainment or something. <laughs> entertainment? I what know. do you do? I don't know. You know when you're like, some people just need a little energy lift on game day. It's not my usual role. I was I know. Gonna you're say. looking at me like, what? Why, on earth? why are you the energy Don't bring person. the cameras back in for that, but. Um. More energy. More energy. <laughs> Give us more energy. No, it just, it's important to make sure the girls are in a good place, you know, whatever they need. And is that your role today? Tea? Water bottles. Um, tea might be my role, yes. Um, and just helping chip in with certain stuff. We are filming. Yeah, come on through, Sarah come Hunter. Come on, Coach Sarah Hunter <laughs> in the building. <laughs> Woo! <Yay>. <laughs> <laughs> come on through. No, you actually can come through. Of course you can. Come on. <laughs> come on through, don't be shy. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're just snooping to check what's in the water bottles and make sure that it's okay. <laughs> Basically the team taster. <laughs> Sorry, carry on, you carry on. Oh, and here we go, match timings. This there is you really go, important. Yes. Come on over here, come look. Yeah, um, so that will go up every game. Why is this hidden back here? I feel like no, usually the, in the, change rooms it's everywhere. No, there's one over oh, there as well. There. It's because okay. it's quite colourful in here, you can't quite tell. <laughs> but yeah, that's the... Do you know what always makes me laugh is these always go up and then no one actually knows the time. Because <laughs> to be fair, they often put a clock up and there's a massive one in this Northampton changing room, luckily. But sometimes they're like, yeah, 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 so it's five past, the unit meeting. And, and then nobody's, nobody's wearing a watch. No one's, no one's got a watch. their phone. Yeah, it's funny. That is hilarious. Yeah. Okay, so activation, mobilisation. Yeah. Very many Asian words. Yeah. That's basically individuals do what you've got to do. You do you, boo. You do you, boo. So for some people, that's like serious set routine. Sarah Hunter would have been out there at like 21 if she could be. <laughs> She'd be straight out there. Whereas some, like Baz below, she'll just probably go out, kick a couple of balls up to herself and be ready. Mm. Yeah. Doesn't take, need Take her eye mask off and she's, yeah. <laughs> okay. Which way? This way. We head back out. Go back outside onto the grass. So normally we'd have, um, pick up some mascots at the front. So Rachel Malcolm, we normally have a couple of mascots. We've got really good following here at Saints, to be fair, and the the community section's awesome. So they pick up a few, pick up a few, pick up a few kids on the Just way out. <laughs> pop them on the hip, take them with you. <laughs> Funny. Oh, and then here we are. It is a short little tunnel. Yeah, short little tunnel. Beautiful day in the Midlands. Brains just are just coming off. What are they doing? Uh, they've just been chatting, chatting shop, really. Chatting shop. Chatting shop. Plan for the day, timings. Oh, I yeah. can definitely do this. Look, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. And then look at this. I know you're not an expert in rugby fields, but this is nice grass. This is not like the Alpass, this. It's proper turf. She has to drag the Gloucester Hartbury girls <laughs> as they sit over there. Out loud. <laughs> they don't have microphones, so you can't do that because now they can't trip you back. You'll be able to hear Mo. Of course you'll be able to hear Mo. <laughs> Using her outside voice. Yeah, exactly. So they're all coming in, going straight in there. <laughs> uh, here comes the circus. Here comes the circus. No one is juggling. No. I like don't see anyone 
<laughs> on a on a what is that the little monocycle? A unicycle. Unicycle. Yeah, yeah. That thing. Yeah, no, no none unicycles, of that. no juggling, no spinning of plates. Although no. I did hear this week that more. Oh, they've got a bit a uh, drum though. Look. Where's even... the drum? Oh, there's the drum. Yeah. Oh, there it is. There we go. <laughs> Come on, we can't hear you. <laughs> the circus is in town. <laughs> Mo's getting herself very excited. Ta look, Tatiana Hurd's in the zone. She looks like a zone kind of person. Yeah, she's, she's drifted back from the drum gang. Oh, she is giving us a smile. Anyway. <laughs> she's not that zone. No, no, no. No, no. Everyone's in very good spirits. Yeah. The vibe is really lovely. And this uh, is what I love. Like some of our girls, obviously Rachel Malcolm, Paris Williams just arriving. Williams Morris, sorry. And they're all just chatting on the way in because everyone knows each other. Sun's out. It's nice vibes, isn't it? It's glorious. So who are you sporting today? Because just be mindful, you're in our, you're in our town. Mm. When you went to Gloucester, you were definitely sp supporting Gloucester. Yeah, I think I and should like probably a... support the underdogs here today. <laughs> <laughs> Supporters, but with this dig nonetheless. <laughs> I see that, I see that. I'll take it anyway. I, I feel take like it. it would be proper encouraging to see Lightning putting on a big performance today here. Yeah. Um, because it's at Franklin's Gardens and you want yes. this local fan base to yeah. kind of take note of you guys and come in here 100%. to this venue when you play here next? Yes, definitely. We're obviously trying to bring our guys from Loughborough down here, but also try and get the Northampton lot to adopt us because we're, we're pretty much here now. We try and play nearly all our home games here where we can. There's branding up and around. You can see it's kind of up the top. Mm. That's not just for us because we're here today. That's permanent. So yeah, um, you're yeah. creeping. We're creeping in. We're creeping in. <laughs> I love that for you. <laughs> yeah. All right, and um, everyone is now starting to look for you. So go be useful somewhere. Okay. I'm going to be the best water girl you've ever seen. Go to carry the tea. On a hot day. Winning. The sun's out, did you know the sun's out? <laughs> I don't think she said that yet. That was the first time she mentioned it. concluded the match here behind us on the pitch as you can see the grass is still intact which is always nice uh, and we are joined uh, Skaz is here again um, our Mo has made it all the way over to this plush seating option that we have available for her wonderful to be here um, and we're joined by Rachel Malcolm and Helen Nelson and um, you might have seen them a lot during the women's the TikTok women's six nations as captain and vice captain for Scotland we had them on recently and today they're wearing their proud Loughborough lightning colors uh, as they were out here performing for the team today, uh, Skaz was running the tea. Could you give her a score out of 10 on her performance? Well, to be fair, you can give the, the kicking aspect, but she was always there for <laughs> encouragement, which <laughs> was much needed today in that heat. Yeah, solid 10. She took her time, so it gave me time to get my <laughs> breath and chill out. And you could blame her for yeah. the amount of yeah, time yeah. that it took? I got told off by the assistant referee after the first time I'd taken it on. As I was walking off, he was like, can you exit the pitch a bit quicker, please, next time to get out of the way of play? <laughs> play was miles away. And I said, oh, I'm really sorry, I can't run. And he was like, well, you probably shouldn't be doing water, should you? <laughs> Cheeky. But you were speed walking like, oh, initially, sorry, and sir. then you were really passive aggressively strolling <laughs> after that. I was wondering what happened, because you had just dropped the pace at which you were going all the way down. Blood sugar levels went low. The heat, the heat, the heat, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you should sip some of the tea that you're carrying, because it, it became very slow. Um, now, today, uh, in case you missed the match, 46-12 uh, was the score on the previous occasion. Um, you guys clawed back quite a bit of territory over the course of the two in, uh, encounters because now 26.40. Uh, Rachel, do you want to give us the not-so-media-trained um, version of your reaction to that result? Uh, so they did score right near the end, so that score sounds worse than they maybe it was. It, yeah, they started it a little yeah. bit. I <laughs> but no, I think we did not turn off in the first half would be the summary. And then the second half, we started to play some rugby. Backs looked real good. Yeah. Um, Helen now kind of pulling the strings and, and doing some nice stuff meant that us forwards could have a <laughs> bit of a rest. How um, hot was it? Because it was point, ridiculous. You had literal steam coming out your ears. I, I honestly, from about five minutes in, I was like, this isn't much fun. <laughs> and every time Skaz came on with a tea, I was like, I'm not having any fun here. It's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> for us the Scots. sun. We're Scottish. We're not ready for this. <laughs> 
it's like 40 degrees out there today um so yeah it was tough it was real tough um but yeah we caught it back played pretty well in the second half yeah Good little springboard to take into the next few games that period from you were what 533 down and then you got up to 2633 in what felt like a relatively short period do you know 10 minutes well <laughs> Outside of Mo getting oh, carded. It, it was just because you were off the pitch. Is yeah, that it? it? Oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Got it now, yeah. <laughs> Too early to leave. <laughs> As producer Shira said, if you're going to storm off, you need to take the whole length of the pitch, okay? Over to the first S in Saints. <laughs> Um, can you can you talk about the card? I was going to say, do you want to talk about it? Do we talk about the card? We can talk about it. I'm a little worried about what is going to happen next. <laughs> Get it out. Skaz was filming you interrogating the ref post-match. Not this interrogating. Is about, this is about half an hour post-match <laughs> and she's still talking to them about it. Not interrogating. First conversation post. Obviously went and did the normal captaincy bit, shake your hand, all of that Thank stuff. You, sir, you were great. But I just wanted to understand because I felt like I was back 10 coming mm. forward putting everyone on side mm. but that wasn't his interpretation mm. so that was just the conversation mm. in a nutshell do you agree with him now <laughs> i gotta watch it back <laughs> <laughs> i'll reserve judgment until i've watched it back and um, but it was both of them that said it so potentially mad for a yellow on that look come on <laughs> there it is. Nobody, nobody understood why my mum to be fair my mum was like were you chops in is that why you got carded and i was like no mum actually wasn't so I'm proud of that. I love that's the first thing she goes to. Mm. Nothing rugby late. Really no, no. Did. Yeah. My best is how that video typifies the um, nickname that um, Helen's partner, Holly Davidson, gave Almo when she came on the show. And uh, shout out to Christine, who was at the live pod, who guessed this answer correctly in the quiz really quickly. What is the nickname that Holly Davidson once gave Mo Hunt? Scrappy doo. Mm. Scrappy doo. It's good. It's very good. Scrappy doo. And <laughs> um, do you know the Holly episode? Has that been our best performing one? Has it? Yeah. Cool. Bar is very high. No pressure. No pressure. And we missed the best bit. We cut the best bit off the end. Oh, his exit. Oh, oh. Perfect. <laughs> she she texts me straight after. It's been like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> because she, I think she thought that she was going to have like a like a second click. I don't like on Zoom, you know how you exit and it's like then end and then you can leave again. So she thought she was going to like just be able to say bye, but she, yeah, she was gone. <laughs> what, what did she say? <laughs> she literally, we were like, oh, thanks, Holly. You can like head off now. We're going to keep talking rubbish. And she literally went, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> 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 and I just went. And we all were just absolutely dying for the next like five minutes. Because you're right. I think she was going perfect. Thanks, guys. See you later. Like, yeah. end. But she, no, all, she all was mortified. Was, Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> she takes me being like, oh, God, it's it not good. so funny. She did text uh, producer Shira to say, sorry, I don't know how that just happened. But we were in fits of giggles for about 20 minutes afterwards. <laughs> um, so that was, I, I mean, we would like to thank her for the funniest off-air behind the scenes <laughs> moment that we've had in a while. Um, but also for, you know, random little nicknames and just obviously a really well-performing pod. Yeah. Hero, she is. She's a hero. She what she does. Absolute legend. Um, so, can we talk about other legends? Uh, Helena Rowland's return and the way that you guys play today was just really nice to see. Yeah, she's great. Um, I think on and off the pitch, you know, she just takes everything in her stride and is a proper leader. Um, but on the pitch, like she showed today, she just tears up. She's very, very fast. So, someone gives her a weak shoulder and she's gone. Um, but no, she's worked incredibly hard to see her. I obviously live with her, and to see her work hard like throughout her rehab, she was like nonstop, just like icing it, and then out of the house the whole time rehabbing and working like hard. Ten sessions a day. Oh, it was she next was level. You're the same, to be fair, but like just so constantly. dedicated. We, we were like complaining about being tired, and she was like, "Yeah, I'm just off to go and do my sixth session." Yeah. We were like, "Okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> relentless." Just, yeah. yeah, she literally. Yeah, she was ridiculous and how she hard she smashed worked. the time frames as well yeah she? absolutely smashed it yeah good yeah. going uh how is our skills coach um scarrett doing mm. are, are this are the <laughs> sessions worth anything i mean are you getting anything out there's of a lot them? of drop balls today to be honest <laughs> so if it's, i haven't really chipped in much this week though no you haven't yeah. Yeah. maybe that's the maybe problem that's, problem. that's the difference i mean you well, are letting the side down. Down. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was resting I was like, my ankle. Are you Steve for training? <laughs> Every time I looked, you just sat on the ground at the back <laughs> training. My, I was like, my foot was really sore. Oh, and I was okay, like, I think fair. I should probably you. just leave. Fair enough. <laughs> my favourite is when you bring the the woggles, the woggles out oh. and you're just batting people. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? You know, like, like the, the, for a the while. things you take in a swimming pool to like keep your float, float. on. Oh, Long, a pool noodle thin float. The like long oh, yes. a yeah, pool noodle. Pool noodle. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Pool noodle. Never heard that term, but yep. How is this not the universal name for woggle? Woggle. Woggle, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so what do you do with a pool noodle? Distract us, so you have to like. There was definitely contact. You're definitely hitting people, no? Basically, I was just trying so to get us handling the ball nicely, but quickly. And yeah. instead of having constant press, defensive pressure, because then someone's running loads, I just basically whack a noodle at them. So that it's, and if the noodle hit the ball, they're too slow. <gasps> no, she's good. There she's good. Then. Very. No, not a fan of that. She's a good, <laughs> coach, love it. good cop kind of coach. Are you going to put that one in your pocket? Yeah. Take it back to class. It was like it was like quite static skills stuff, wasn't it? Yeah. So it was like girls were on a more chill day. What? How can we get something out of not moving very far? To be fair, sometimes I give them my girls and we play like touch as a warm up, and I'm like, just hit the person, just hit anyone you can. Yeah, I love it. It's good fun. You should try. Uh, I feel like (laughs) I feel like I would exclusively like to retain the use of a pool noodle for when I'm in a pool (laughs) and not have anyone slap me with it. Thank you, but. I'm glad that it works for you guys. Mm. <laughs> but That's may- what I've brought to the party, really. <laughs> may, may the improvement be visible soon. Hopefully. No, she, she's class, to be fair. She, um, she brings a lot of positive energy and gets everyone excited about attack skills and... Forwards passing. Forwards passing. Triple threats. Crazy. Triple mm. threats. And yep. CB's kicking has come CB's along. CB's kicking has come a long way. Long way. <laughs> That's like one of our props, so probably not her the essential skill. She I was going to say, ca- on, cool KPIs. Yeah. Like we actually did a bit of drop kicking with Sarah Hunter as well the other day. I saw that. You guys were warming up. Yeah. Did you film any of that? No, I didn't. Do you know what? It didn't look terrible. It wasn't terrible. Yeah, it was fair. better than you'd expect. Yeah, <laughs> you are you are so driven to turn everyone into a kicker. You will even get the props kicking. Yes. Well, that's not driven by me. That's driven by CB. <laughs> yeah. Loves it. Absolutely loves it. Yeah. Um, now, well, that is an unusual connection. Our friends at Vodafone are all about feeling the connection. So this week, I want you to tell me where you have felt the connection in rugby. We haven't seen you for a while, maybe, so... Oh, I was going to say maybe do Mo last. Look at her I've face. Got, I've got two, so I can go all one right. early and then one Okay, last. Okay, wait. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Let's start at the end there. <laughs> Skaz, lead us. Mine was going to be uh, on Wednesday this week. I went with the university to Buck Sevens which the girls smashed. We won. It was great. Just lots of people playing rugby. It was nice. And you're obsessed and with sevens. Let's seven see. season. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah. There we go. Peace and love. Uh, mine is probably linking back up with the fours pack um, with Lightning. I think like we've got quite a young pack, but like Lily, our, our line out leader, like she absolutely smashed it today. And I think just us coming back together and working with Sunts for the our last block as with her as our coach and just like... Yeah, I think that was like a real strength for our game today. So I think, yeah, just come together. And, and there were no tears today. No tears today. No, no I, tears. I've cried. I have cried quite a lot about it. <laughs> it's about the connection in the pub the other evening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we went out last weekend and I was not ready to see Sarah Hunter yet. And <laughs> except that she's leaving us. I, don't, I got a bit upset. <laughs> <laughs> in the pub. I'd had quite a few. Several cocktails. Cock- that <laughs> <I> think, yeah. <laughs> no, it's fine. But we're over it. We're over so it. you're a crier. Even in the pub. <laughs> Do you know what? No, not not it's what Sarah Hunter brings out in you. Yeah. Oh, she's, she's had a massive impact. Um, so yeah, no, mine <laughs> is just getting back together with the the forwards pack here, and I think yeah, putting out a decent performance today. Okay, connection. Yeah, I'd say just linking up with Hale again, back on the pitch. It's been over a year, so yeah. Helena Rowland. The dogs. Helena Rowland. Dogs back together. <laughs> what is I that? I like that more than she does. <laughs> what is that? So I think it was Rona, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, our old flatmate Rona started calling me Nell Dog and Hell was Hell Dog. So together we are the dogs. Nell Dog and Hell Dog. But it's the dogs. It's with an, a, a W, so it's D-A-W-G, dogs. the dogs. Dogs. Do you like it? I, I feel like I needed to have been there. It's really, it has really caught. It yeah. has. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, everyone has a dog nickname. I, I mean, do. I told you. Wow. We're obsessed with dogs. Um, a dog related story or no connection there? No, no, no connection to dog related story. Um, first one being back with GH and doing our song in the changing room. Is that what we're calling you guys now? GH? GH. Yeah. Gloss Not the what is your song? GH. 
I can't tell you that. Oh, really? Oh. No, I heard it. It, it was a lot of, yeah, um, <laughs> Can't Hold Us, Macklemore. Oh, nice. great song. Yeah, Very good song. but everyone goes wild. And that's why Ellie brought the drum, which just went next level. So a lot of time for that. Um, but the actual connection, right, this settling. Um, so we went to <laughs> Wales for Claire Allen's birthday at the weekend. There was a few of us that were down there. And we went out for a few drinks, ended up in Tenby. Um, everyone knows Pembrokeshire, don't they? Ended up in Tenby. The only pub, pretty much, that was uh, still open. Doing you karaoke. Need to set the there. scene as well. This is not high season yet. Yeah. And Tenby is like pure, um, like tourist holiday. So there's like, there's seaside. no one there. It's just just the locals. Yeah. Seaside, pretty much. just the yeah, locals. Yeah. Seaside, just the locals. Like had a nice meal, a few cocktails, and then we've gone out to try and find something a little bit more lively. And uh, we're just like walking into this pub. And it's quite dead. Like, there's not many people there. Oh, Flanagan's, if you, yeah, if you care. Yeah. Nice guys. I thought you didn't want this story. You seem to well, be well for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and basically, as we've walked into the pub, there's a group of probably about 15, 20 people, all in tie dye, um, women's rugby team, who are walking out the pub. And as they walk out the pub, they see the scars just coming in the pub, and they've literally double backed on themselves and followed us back into the pub. And they're like. Emily Scarrett, like honestly, it was the best thing I think I've seen. It was actually amazing. They were really good crack and it was a good night. But just their first initial reaction, the fact they were leaving and they were like, nah, that's Emily <laughs> scary. Let's see you back And then there. when they came in, they were like, oh, what are you doing here? <laughs> and we were like, I don't know. I just honestly. Don't know. You were like, and we don't even have a decent excuse. Yeah, nothing. Just having some fun. Yeah. yeah. Connection to grassroots. They were on their first rugby tour. <laughs> Weren't they? I can't what? remember the team. I was going to say, we need to They're shout out the club. Essex. Yeah, somewhere from Essex, but they've gone a long way to get down to Pembrokeshire. Yeah. But their first ever rugby tour, they were loving it. And obviously, top top. And considering they, they were going home, they stayed for the next like three hours. Didn't yeah. They? yeah. <laughs> it was so good. Good, good innings. Uh, did they have tie dyed bucket hats as well? Yes. Tie dye everything. 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 Yeah, yeah. Literally, oh, head to toe. Commitment. Yeah. Yeah. Love that for them. They yeah. bought us a tequila rose, actually. So that was very nice of them. A what? A oh, tequila no. rose. It's one of the best shots out there. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna blaze past that. Yeah. <laughs> this does not need to turn into Coachella. Yeah, We're not having, having any shot we? right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was feel the connection. <clears throat> Let me just have quickly. You had one? I have not had a tequila rose. No. No, feel the connection. <laughs> You know the segment we're doing now, Mo. Have you got one? <laughs> <laughs> no one cares about my connections. Oh, oh I care. Uh, best connection is probably just being here today and seeing how you guys in purple are moving closer to Northampton Saints. And hopefully the Northampton Saints fans come closer as well. Just connection. Um, why are all the Scottish girls in Loughborough, why are you guys so keen on <laughs> playing in that team? Why is it you all find yourself? We just love Midlands. each other. We oh. can't, we just got attachment issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Finish a, few of us, a few of us started here, like at the day dot, and then I think we just gradually pulled more and more of us to come. So are you the, the head of recruitment, basically? I think I've had quite a big part in yeah. a lot of the recruitment. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, me and Sarah Bonner yeah. and... Jenny Max Maxwell. J Max, oh, of Jenny course. Ma uh, Leah, who wasn't Scottish at the time, but is now Scottish. <laughs> 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 How does that... Sorry, Leah, that was you. <laughs> <laughs> I, t I converted her to be Scottish, so that was... <laughs> That is, I mean, you're, you should be an influencer. <laughs> you, should, you should really earn money for this because you can convert people to different nationalities. Um, and I think, yeah, I'm definitely messing someone off. Uh, but then, yeah, so then we gradually, more and more of us kind of migrated. But yeah, we do, we love each other a lot. And then we just like being at the same club. And you get to play with, well, Skaz when she's playing. Not recently. Though. Not recently. No. And Sarah Hunter. Very selfish, really. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, no, yeah, obviously the legend that is Sarah Hunter um, until recently, which is no longer. I don't think you can take her legend status off. <laughs> no, I think it's just <laughs> a legend until yeah. recently. Yeah. I read, played yeah. with her until recently. <laughs> she will always be a legend, particularly in my like eyes. Like a bad hero. <laughs> so when we were in the change room, and I asked um, our Skazi about the music being played in the change room, I half anticipated the kind of conversation you and I had when we were in Gloucester. What I got from her was that the music in the Loughborough Lightning change room is very hard. No, 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 no. And no, then, no, no. Rap. No, no. 
sing. A lot of no, that. I said, Br- Bryony Field is sometimes on music yeah. and the game day playlist is all right. But if it strays to her music. <laughs> the young team the do young have a, like right. a certain vibe. How would there. you describe it? So we, I would say we've got a few different contributors. When Baz is on, it's a lot more chill. Very chill. Island vibes. CB was good today. Yeah, CB's she was very good, good actually. Yeah. She's probably in my top yeah. top pick. So, like musicians, Do you like not who have are like we talking? One that just owns it. Mm. No. We ha- we escalate it, I think. Yeah. Don't we? we like, like to all chip in, give everybody yeah. a chance. Emma Hardy sometimes. She's yeah. not bad. She gets mm. it. She kind of like middle ground, I think. Yeah. Yeah. No. CB's CB would my be my pick. my hubs yeah. today. That was on. Is that what it's yeah, called? Hers yeah. Is like old, yeah. Hers is like Bell old school R and B. Yeah. Sure. That was good. My humps. My humps. <laughs> my humps. It's not R and B. What what would that class as? That's just pop. Pop. <laughs> that's just the black R B's. <laughs> Guys' <his> favourite. <laughs> okay, that's why I need artist names because I feel like we're not speaking the same language consistently. <laughs> um, Sorry, let me stop you there. That is not R and B. What my humps? <laughs> Um, in the Rugby World article on Rachel Malcolm and ten things you should know about her, oh it God. says you listen to Chase and Status before a game. Mm. I do. Yes. Which song? Um, so, oh, I'm not going to be able to remember what it is now. I've got a new one that I really like. Big fan. Big fan. <laughs> Big fan. <laughs> Serious. No, it's yeah. Playlist, it Owns all the albums. What is it? Goes but to all end the credits would be like my OG. That's strong. strong. Always strong. on there. Um, God, that must be an old article. I don't remember when I last said that. <laughs> um, and Alive as well. Those would be two pre-match ones I enjoy. Are you like Sense and you do the same ones? You would think I would be. Yeah, that's what I was asking. No, no. Not. Oh. oh, do you know what, actually? At the World Cup, me and um, Was, Emma Walsall, shared a room and we got in this routine where we played <laughs> I Drink Wine by Adele. That was our last song before we <laughs> left the room. Every- <laughs> that is epic. And we like, yeah, crazy. But we just- absolutely loved it and we just absolutely belted it out. And then we came back to club and we were in the car on the way to our first game and we were like about to get out of the car and we were like, should we play it? <laughs> so then we got into this thing where now... <laughs> Listen to I Drink Wine by Adele as our last song before we get out of the car. But sadly, she's not playing at the minute, so it's not a tradition that we are continuing. Aww. But yeah, that really worked for us. <laughs> Very untraditional. I love that. The your you guys as your three house, housemates combination. Do you have like a pre-game playlist that starts building, like leading into match day, or am um, I imagining way too much? Yeah. Well, so today I drove, so I just put on some music, like kind of chill vibes as we're going, and then 20 minutes out, CB put on Pitbull Radio. Mm. That's our <laughs> go-to. Pitbull <laughs> Radio. Pitbull Radio. Yeah. So no, it's just un, dos, tres, cuatro, yeah. Mm, yeah. Yes. the whole time, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Is that just all that happens on Pitbull Radio? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, you know I want to, and then... Okay. I think if, when you get to know CB, you'll see that that's you very on brand. Uh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. I almost just can't imagine you and Pitbull, like, in the car together. Glasses oh. on. <laughs> 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 Don't judge a book by its cover, Emma. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> you just look so chilled. Nah, but before a game, it's nice to get a little buzz on. Just a tiny bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing that I found in the research that producer Shira compiles for us is that Wikipedia says Rachel Malcolm is a modern back row player, <laughs> known for her work rate about the pitch and on both Not sides today. of the ball. <laughs> in her rugby career, she has played a variety of positions, including hooker. True. 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 Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was like, that can't be right. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't necessarily out of choice. Um, it was when I first started, and went to s- when we first. Well, when I first started playing Scotland, I don't think I'd played yet actually at this point. And they, we were a bit short on hookers, and they, I was kind of the p- like a puppy when I first started playing rugby, and like would just do anything I was told. Yeah, you know, like just catch. They the were like, run. "Come That's here." All I would do in the middle, and you went, "Uh huh." Yeah. So they were like, "We." If you can try and like learn to throw, then we might look at you as a hooker. And I was like, I just want to play for Scotland, so I'll yeah, sounds good, perfect. Um, so yeah, started. <laughs> hooker is a wild choice when you've just started playing rugby. It's <laughs> Scotland. Your just... brother played. I think that was so the I, thing. I playing. actually think so. <laughs> so yeah. so the coach, honestly, I think that the was... coach that we had at Scotland <laughs> at the time, who Jade Monroe, absolute legend. Um, he had coached my brother, and had also both my brothers were hookers. So I think he just saw me arrive and was like, ah, Malcolm. Malcolm. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I've, I played 
I think my first start for Scotland was at Hooker. Ended after 38 minutes, so obliterated my ankle. <laughs> so it wasn't that good. But uh, yeah, no, played, played, and then have played Hooker on and off for Lightning as well. It's basically just whenever we need one to cover somewhere. And then we've had a few situations at Scotland where both our hookers have got injured at the same time. I went from like, you'll never play it again to playing 80 minutes against Japan one time. So yeah, have done. Yeah, true fact. So convert from hockey at age group level, representing yeah. Scotland, the whole thing, to straight into the front row. Just wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Emily's face. Honestly, I, I remember can't it. screw it up anymore, I don't know. I just don't <laughs> understand that. Like, oh. Amy, I remember Amy, Amy, top, Amy Cocaine taught me to throw, which was so, I was in good hands to be fair. <laughs> I actually remember the first, actually, no, I can actually remember the first game I ever played at hooker. All I'd done at this point was, but Scotland had been like, you might play in the Six Nations, so you probably need to play. So we played Worcester with Litchfield and I missed every single line out. It's <laughs> like a Litchfield reunion. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of. Not me. Oh, not just um, not those. Yeah, we played, we played, I think, yeah, we played Worcester at Litchfield for Litchfield. And I, at this point, I still didn't really know how to play rugby full stop, but let alone play in the front row. And <laughs> I remember Harriet Miller Mills coming up to me and like holding my shoulders and being like, it'll never be as bad as this ever again. <laughs> She was like, <laughs> she was like, so just, just get through it. Cause I was just like throwing into this line out and my throws were just like hitting the floor, like going nowhere, like where they were supposed to go. And she was just like, and she after it was, and I don't think it was on the pitch for about 15 minutes. So good. <laughs> and she was like, and she was, she just came up. She was like, honestly, just get through this. Cause it's never going to be this bad ever again. <laughs> and she was right. To be fair, that was the worst it ever was. <laughs> the worst it ever yeah, was. It was. Yeah. I mean, if you so start on good. a low note, then yeah. you can only go up from yeah. there. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so, um, did you hear when Sarah Bonner told us about your debut story? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would you like to tell your side of that story? It's pretty <laughs> Would you like to not be <laughs> happy at all? Um, no, so yeah, I remember it well. Um, you have to understand, me and Sarah Bonner were very out of our depth when we first played for Scotland. Like, we, Nels can probably vouch, we really didn't really know what was going on. And I remember we just, in that moment, didn't feel like we could ask the question of a law that was quite so simple. And it was her that did it. Like, we came on the pitch at the same time. It was literally <laughs> the first breakdown we were at. And she just flew at the nine. <laughs> and the referee was... Honestly, I think the referee was the most shocked out of anyone. <laughs> Bewildered. <because laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> and she just turned and looked at me. We were like, yeah, we got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Turns out that's not yeah. how it works. So note to coaches, when people are quite new to the sport, just be really explicit Assume with nothing. your <laughs> wording. Yeah, but it's a true story. <laughs> you, is that something that you now are... Because the girls now are coming through have just got so much more experience and they've just got so many more years of actually playing the sport and watching women play it. And just I feel like you just don't hear of that so much anymore. No, I, I think, yeah, I think m like our stories are probably quite unique. There's not many like 25 year olds that just start playing rugby and then end up in the same with Bonds. Like we'd both come to rugby real late. So yeah. we were very, and we didn't even, yeah, didn't even have much background in rugby. So like <laughs> there's not, like you say, most of the people coming through now through pathways and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like there's so much more opportunities. So like they tend to know the laws when they. <laughs> <laughs> but rugby is a complex sport. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember that I won't name her, the unnamed probably <laughs> 30 capped England international who we had to explain what the gate was at a breakdown yeah. to her? Pre-Olympics. Pre-Olympics. <laughs> Been playing rugby a long time. Wow. Yeah. And she didn't know what the gate was. Who is it? When she was no. flying in at the breakdown from the side and kept getting penal, I was like, what? We did that today. We had Sarah Cox come in um, to like help us pre-Olympics. And um, yeah, well, she was just doing a little bit and then this unnamed player just put a hand up and went, excuse me, sorry, I just want to ask, what's the gate? And all of us were like, oh. <laughs> so good. So it happens. Yeah, it does. It yeah. does happen. No, it was a steep learning curve. And I think now, I don't know, you guys can probably fight. I think I'm no, doing you're all right. Good. Got you're, doing, you're doing, you're doing great. Got them yeah. under control now. <laughs> But your brothers both played, like you said, they played hooker. Your yeah. one brother plays for the Seattle Seawolves. He does, yeah. Now, why were you so late to the sport? Just uh, because you were that good at hockey that nothing else was getting a look in? Uh, I wasn't that good, I wouldn't say. I was, I was, I worked very hard. I ran around a lot and 
kind of got on <laughs> got on teams by being very hard working and that was about it. Not much skill set, no speed. Um <laughs> <laughs> which are both very essential things in hockey. Um no, I think like growing up, like my dad was a rugby player as well, um brothers both played and I think me and my sister like kind of resented that a little bit and we both played hockey and like I was just like I didn't even used to like they used to go and watch Scotland play at Murrayfield all the time I wasn't really that interested I just wanted to go and watch Scottish hockey play and it's kind of yeah I feel a bit silly I probably <laughs> should have done um but yeah no I think I was just like I was I'm quite a focused person as these guys would probably tell you so <laughs> I yeah like was just like hockey's everything and then yeah it wasn't and then rugby was everything. How did you actually swap over? What was the... Um, so my hockey SNC coach was a girl called Saskia. Remember Saskia? Yeah, yeah literally. Saskia, literally. Literally. literally again. Um, so she was my SNC coach when I was playing hockey for Loughra. Um, and she... I'd like been playing a little bit of touch rugby in like the off season. And um, some of the girls that were in our touch team played... Or not some one of the touch teams played for Litchfield, obviously. And um, Saskia was one of them. And she was like, oh, come just like come along to pre-season at Litchfield, like hockey season's, pre-season's not started yet. So like, I was like, oh yeah, there's no harm in that kind of thing. Went along, didn't have a clue what I was doing. But RB, our coach just was like, he was, he's like exactly the kind of coach you want as like starting out in a sport. Like I remember my first session, like I was clueless. But he just kept telling me how amazing I was. And like, <laughs> he was just like, she's a player. Like she's going to be class. And I really wasn't class at all, but like he made me feel like I was. Speed, and speed, speed yeah, and pace. Yeah. And he was just like, <laughs> that was and, one of um, his favorite sayings. Yeah. I don't know. I just like, I loved the vibe. And like, I was very quickly just like hooked. And then, and so yeah, so my, it was my hockey SNC coach who, who pulled me along to Litchfield. And then that was kind of, I played both like hockey and rugby for a year and then stopped playing hockey and just played rugby. Now, that's an interesting route in and a light one, but Helen Nelson, the Helen Nelson origin story is honestly one of the craziest ones I've read in a while because you were deep into alpine skiing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which obviously I come from somewhere where it doesn't snow. It just f to, for me, it's nuts that you spent so much time, so many years so dedicatedly doing this incredibly, well, it seems like one of those sports that just takes over like your whole life. And it's an individual sport. It's not like hockey. It's not like you were playing with 10 other teammates on your side. So to then just go from slalom <laughs> into rugby, <laughs> I mean, that's a wild one. Yeah. That's, not, and that's not the typical route. But you did play r rugby a little earlier before you took up yeah. alpine skiing. Yeah, so right. always, I played as a youngster. I always had like quite strong family links to rugby. And my brother played as well. So yeah. like played from the age of six or seven, always going along. Mm. And then, yeah, I think just there wasn't that many. Like I come from quite a small place, a wee village, and not that many girls played. So when I got to like 10, 12, there wasn't um, a team to be able to play mm. rugby. So, and I'd always skied. And then opportunities just started opening up to go and take my racing a bit more seriously. Because your parents were both instructors. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I started skiing when I was like two. Wow. Yeah. Because wow. I like 20 minutes away from like a ski slope in Glencoe. Um, so it was just like part of growing up skiing. And then doing that as a sport when you're a teenager, how does what does that look like? Because I'm sure you don't just do that after school five days a week, or do you? Is that no, no? So I um, I was very lucky when I was from my first year of high school. I won a bursary to go and train in Chamonix in the Alps for six weeks in in the year. So I got that for I think three years. Um, so I would do all my schooling out there, and it was just it was carnage to be fair. Like lived with thirty other students. Um, from the age of like 12 till 18 and just, yeah, skied in the mornings, like maybe eight till one and then came back and had some lunch and then did school in the afternoon. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was cool. Did it you was know fun. That? We literally learnt this the other day in the team room because we were quizzing you about something, weren't we? And then she was like, yeah, I lived in France for like a month every year. And we were like, what? Mm. Yeah. Just a little skiing in the morning, a little school in the afternoon, nothing major. Yep. And as a sport, I don't know enough about it, but A, it's an individual sport. B, it looks really scary to do. <laughs> so were you just really fearless from kind of, because you were doing it from basically being a toddler, so it didn't feel that scary or intimidating? I think so. Like, so I did three different disciplines. I did slalom, giant slalom and super G. So slalom is like 
lots of turns, so mm. not too fast. Mm. Giant Slalom, bigger turns, so a bit faster. And then Super G is not many gates at all. You're just taking the fastest route down the hill, essentially. So that was quite scary. Um, I remember it being like up at the start gate and kind of thinking like, let's just not get injured here. Which is maybe, that's when I started to realise maybe it wasn't for me because I think you should be thinking about going as fast as you can as opposed to, I don't want to get injured. Um, wow. But no, it was cool. Like, I think, like you say, that individual sport, like you lived as a team, so lived with um, 10 to 15 people and like worked together, did fitness together. But then on that like race day, you were competing against each other. Um, so it was like, I think in terms of like mental toughness and stuff, like it did a lot for me back in did, the early days. Did you ever have a go at the Eddie the Eagle one? I can't remember what that's called. Yes. You did? Yeah. Um, ski jumping. Yeah. That's terrifying. So they say that if you don't do a full, um, full size one before the age of like, before 10, then you're you not cut out for it because it's too scary. So we did like a medium sized one. So they just shove you on it before, before I think so. Before yeah. you know <laughs> how scary it is, yeah. you just... That's nuts. That's wild. Yeah. And was it fun? Yeah, like scary, but fun. I don't think anyone got injured. But we were doing it on like, we did the wrong kind of equipment. We were doing it on our like our race skis, whereas they've got really big fat skis. Like it's a completely different sport, but... How old are you, 12? Uh, I, so I stopped when I was 17. Who fed you? Did you go out when you were 12? <laughs> right, no, we would, cook. <laughs> we would cook for ourselves. At 12? Yeah. That's nuts, isn't it? You cooked for yourself? See? And you were competing. <laughs> Most still doesn't cook it. for herself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who fed Teach you? Me how? Which is funny because I'm probably not the best cook, am I? <laughs> oh my goodness, you need to see some of the culinary delights that come out. <laughs> yeah. What is it? What, what is your speciality? Culinary delights. Hilla Nelson cooks well, us dinner. Come Basically, on. Give us I the just, best ones. <laughs> I very much, after training, you want to just eat fast, don't you? And you want to get in like protein and then carbs, whatever. So I just tick a box. So the other day I had pasta on its own and then or like dry pasta i had <laughs> cooked but dry yeah i've got yeah, 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 yeah if you want to see <laughs> yeah. i was gonna um, say not the crunchy no, one no, no. and then in the air fryer i put just put in salmon chorizo and tender stem broccoli that's all right you're ma no you're making this sound a lot better than how it looked <laughs> I think because I ate the broccoli first because that was ready first and then it was a very beige plate basically. But CB loves to document my bad cooking and make it look worse than it is. But also <laughs> you, you can't really taste or smell anymore, can no. you? Yeah. Mm. Why not? COVID. COVID. COVID got her. <gasps> really? Yeah. Taste and smell? Yeah. Can you tell the story about the shaker? Oh. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I sat in the team room the other day drinking my well I just made my protein shake and I opened the lid and Chloe was sat next to me and she was like what's that smell I was like oh is it this and she was I think it was quite smelly and then Hill was like yep yeah, doesn't smell good and then Kath was sat on the sofa oh there wasn't she was like what's that smell <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys that's definitely happened before though when with yeah. your shaker when Holly found in your car and she was like have you been using this <laughs> Mm. Smell is essential in life. It is. <laughs> it's really important to have friends who just smell things before you eat them or yeah. drink them. Yeah, it's yeah. always important to have a good friend around. Wow, that is astonishing. So you then go f doing slalom and crazy scary slalom and then the one that's even nattier than that. And then you stop. Why? Because I went, to, basically it was like I could, once I finished school, it, the choice was do I go like full time for a year and give it a go mm. or do I go to university? And I just decided to go to uni. Why? Why to go to uni? Because that sounds like the boring one of the two. <laughs> I just, like, I don't think, obviously, like, skiing end goal is probably Olympics. That's, like, what yeah. everyone aims for. And I was never good enough to reach Olympics. Unless, yeah, I don't think I was ever going to get there. So I just kind of made that decision. Like, I can still maybe get away in the um, holidays of uni and keep competing a little bit, but I didn't want to... I wanted to get on with my life, I think. Mm. Yeah. And I get why Rachel did a BSc in Sports and Exercise Science and an MSc in Exercise Physiology and a PhD in Environmental Physiology. But you studied <laughs> geophysics <laughs> and I have to concentrate when I say this word, a meteorolo meteorolo meteorology. Meteorology. I knew where that <laughs> sentence was going as soon as you went, I get. Why Rachel did sport. So in a weird way, I mean, she has a PhD and that's really OTT for someone who also Dr. captains Malcolm. her country. <laughs> Dr. Malcolm. Meteorology? 
Mm. <laughs> Talk to us. Sorry, about I don't this. want to chase my skiing dream because I'm gonna go study meteorology. Yeah, <laughs> and geophysics. Is it random? Is it really it random? Is a bit random? Yeah. <sighs> I mean, did you, was there a point when you were nine where you were like, I'd like to study geophysics and meteorology? No, nobody tells you what to do when you're at school. You just pick. You look at the syllabus and you just pick a random course, don't you? <laughs> that is the most Helen Nelson way of <laughs> No. So at school, I loved science, so I did like all the sciences, and I loved maths. So I actually started off, I got in, I did physics my first year and maths got very, very difficult. So I tried to, I thought I was making it easier by picking, then like moving to my second year into geophysics and meteorology. Geophysics. Yeah. What, what do you learn about? What, what are those words? So geophysics <laughs> is like... Sound incredibly stupid. <laughs> geophysics is more about like subsurface stuff. So like um, oil rigs and like trying to find like exploration. Okay. Um, meteorology is the weather so it was like a little bit of both like clouds cloud formations yeah yeah nice I yeah. Know that but i also probably spent too much time playing rugby at uni as opposed to but you got your degree yeah i got my degree and then on linkedin it says you worked as a software developer as well for yeah. just you know learning so much <laughs> so in uh order management and trade reconciliation which where uh, is that i Go on, Mo, you ask <laughs> <laughs> I would like Mo to tell us <laughs> what that is. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> management and trade reconciliation software development. I don't even know what reconciliation means, <laughs> and I know I should know. <laughs> so I'm just going to sit here quietly. So you ended up in software development via that that really interesting scientific route. Yeah, so I did quite a bit of um, <laughs> like coding for my dissertation for uni. So then I like basically got a job off the back of that for a couple of years. Um, that is astonishing. Isn't that just the most interesting combination you know, of things? It's, but it's like, it's funny, isn't it? Because so many people we know that play sport, study sport or coaching or, yeah. I don't know, psychology or something like quite closely attached to it. So when somebody does something that's not, we're all like, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Reconciliation. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> but um, tell me about your, because your work in, in academia, does it balance out the rugby well, or do you sometimes feel like the one doesn't really have the chance to be what it could be because of the other? Uh, yeah, probably, but I've never, I've been really lucky in that I've always been like really well supported in like my work life that they have always let me do the rugby thing as mm. like, a priority, mm. uh, which I think is probably quite unique. But I think being part of like a sports science department mm. um, and having like my PhD supervisor um, was, well, she is still my kind of one, one of my bosses, but she basically covers for me left, right and centre yeah. every day of the week. Yeah. Um, and she kind of did that through like the start of my rugby career, through my PhD. Um, and she just like, I, genuinely, I think like when you do like dual career stuff with like sport and academia you like you have to have good people supporting you it just doesn't yeah. work and I think like those are like the heroes in our lives aren't they like in terms of that it, it was it was always okay because I had her that like supported me and a number of other people as well mm. um but yeah no like if I'm honest academia was never a priority it was always sport but I just quite liked learning so it just kind of kept falling into new degrees <laughs> that I will not be doing any more degrees. Any <laughs> postdoctoral studies that no, you're busy not. with I, at the moment? Fair, I still do it. Like, the research bit is like the bit I really enjoy. Um, teaching, I never really probably had enough time to dedicate um, to it. So like I probably never, like that was the bit that probably always like was, was tougher to balance alongside rugby because that does need you to be organised and turn up with a lecture that's going to cover an hour and... So that was the stressful bit. But the research bit I loved, like, and I still love. So I've, I've got, like, PhD students who I supervise and get to still kind of be involved in research through that, which is cool. Um, but like I say, I've got cool people that look after it while I'm not there. So it kind of balances out. And you've helped support quite a lot of the uni girls as well. Like, when it's, like, <laughs> dissertation time or, like, assignment time, they're all like, Scotty, what do I do with this? Because <laughs> obviously she's a doctor in it and they're doing their undergrads or whatever. So quite a lot of them come and pick yeah. your brains, don't yeah, they? Yeah, a little bit, like... With two days to go. Yeah, yeah, no, I've had various um, 
various people along the way. I remember actually trying to help Amy Cocaine at one point, trying to get through her degree, which was a lost cause. <laughs> <laughs> and doing things for actually Lisa Thompson, who's been in university for about 10 years. Um, I remember sitting with her one night and she was like, I've got a deadline and it's it's, it's midnight. <laughs> it's like 6 p.m. <laughs> so like sitting with people, yeah. So like I have tried to help some people, some to no success but I yeah. feel like yeah maybe I've helped a few rugby players get through their degrees along the way and uni is where you picked rugby up again then Helen yeah. you at, at Edinburgh <laughs> University but then post Edinburgh University and all of this other work you went to Montpellier, Montpellier which did that have anything to do with the fact that you spent so much time in France when you were a teenager and you just went oh well I'll go back like tell me about that decision to go play there um I think well so there weren't any contracts in Scotland at that point, was there? No, you had to there go was to France to get a contract. Basically, you had to go to France to get a contract. But there are other places that you could get a contract. Not at that point. No, at that not. Time. So um, Lisa Thompson, Chloe Rowley and Jade had gone to Lille, which was up in the north. And um, yeah, they'd had, well, varying enjoyment of that <laughs> experience. But, but I'm but assuming you learned to speak French when you were a teen and out there all the time. No. Oh, no. No, like okay. I'd done French in school, but it wasn't great at all. Um, no, I just, I think I fancied a year in the south of France. I was like, if you're going to go to France, why would you not pick the sunny part of it? Um, so, yeah, literally just like Googled French clubs, picked the one furthest south and <laughs> found an email address and emailed them. And um, But then, like, because it was in France, it's really random, isn't it? But Scottish Rugby then supported me to go there. Yeah. Oh. Um, so that was kind of my first contract for rugby um, so spent a year out there which was unbelievable like the way they see rugby is just so different it's like so you have a, a kickoff at like I don't know 4 p.m and you spend the whole night before together you go for beers if it was an away game the tradition was you go for beers and then Mo's face just lit up <laughs> and then the next day like you meet for breakfast so early and you spend the whole day together because it's about the experience and like that kind of family vibe um so the off pitch is really really important for them which is cool and on the pitch it's just like Lene Corson said to us on a previous episode joue joue oh, joue the goal was to not have a ruck so if they can score by just offloading like they would say if I was like trying to set up a rock to be like oh, so British and I'm like no this is <laughs> rugby <laughs> but no it was cool it was like just to see the game in a totally different way it was a great experience um I did see tons of people going out for the Toulouse Sevens over the weekend though um would you our Sevens correspondent Emily Scarrett like to give us an update on the GB Sevens girls and their journey Scotty and I were actually in Toulouse last year and it was a lot of fun I'm sad we're not there this year I don't think Scotty is. No, it's a lot of fun. Lot okay, of fun. give us the give us the review of the weekend in Toulouse, the version that we, we will went. not get from Skaz, yeah. Um, one word review. <laughs> Doesn't have to be one. You can oh, give no. us a few uh, sentences. Not much sleep would be... <laughs> Team no sleep. Team yeah. no sleep. Uh, but are you at the sevens? We if... were a bit of a disappointment to, no. to our team at one point because we didn't make it to their crucial game. I was there. It's kind of my there. Honestly, it was brilliant. It was <laughs> so the first day we turned up, we had these guys all in the corner. We finished our game, we came along and they were rushing to the front, we're getting photos. <laughs> Second day they we had Scotland flags. I think we had our biggest game. I think it was South Africa. So we won in the morning and it was maybe like a nine AM kickoff. So we come along like just won, like having so much fun. <laughs> we're like, come to our corner, where's all our fans? Scaz, just there, glasses on, like no expression, <laughs> didn't move, just like a wee wave. <laughs> Right. But okay. at least I was there. Yeah. You were there. We, she could master a wee wave. Yeah. yeah, just about. The players were like a support crew for the hungover <laughs> lot in the stand. Because we had access to like juice, water, hydro tabs. We'd come along and we'd be like, can we get anyone anything? Like, juice for you. We've got a game in 20 minutes. Hydro tabs. Sorting these guys out. Yeah, yeah. bring them some way. gels, you know, just get them ready. <laughs> Too good. <laughs> so funny. Okay, update from the Toulouse Sevens. So, Ireland have qualified for the Olympics. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Here we go. Actually, they, yeah, they did really, really well. They were all chuffed to bits as well. The scenes afterwards were very yeah. cool. Uh, so that means they've qualified. GB and Fiji will have to go to their regional qualifier to do so. Mm -hmm. GB are off to Poland in a month or so. A mm -hmm. um, few upsets, actually. Aust France beat Australia. 
and who else beat Australia? America beat Australia this morning in the semi. And then New Zealand narrowly beat America in the final. Oh, was it narrow? Narrow, 1914, off the top of my head. Oh. Amazing. Yes. So another, not as good a weather actually this year. We'd be probably oh, be yeah. glad we went there. Yeah, well, everyone's wearing hoodies and yeah. like long trousers and mm. stuff. Yeah, no um, Rona Lloyd and Lisa Thompson both putting in massive performances. So you guys must be so proud of them. This whole GB7s thing, getting the whole band together <laughs> under one flag um, is quite fun watching. Um, jazz. Yeah. Also yeah. absolutely massive. Although, did you see, who was it? Was it Tom or Rona? Can you explain the thing about when they keep getting called English? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> well, Tom and Rona are probably two of the most Scottish Scots you will ever meet. Yep. Like, they, yeah, I, I don't even know how to really put it into words, but they, obviously, England have been on the series before, and I think a lot of, like, the other teams refer to GB as England. To which those two just, it just doesn't go down well, does it? <laughs> They've no. created, uh, is it on their close friends? I can't remember. Every now and again, somebody pops up on Instagram, either on their close friends or they've created these memes where it's basically like this terrible face with like an eye roll and a like <laughs> head thrown backwards and the captions like every time somebody calls the GB team England again. <laughs> they are not <laughs> England. It. Mm. But it's because they play in red and white. It's confusing. I would say that that's the number one reason for this. <laughs> mm. I would put in an application for the kit to be relooked <laughs> next year. Mm. Um, that would probably be an easy solve. Speaking of people who um, are making us proud, Joy Neville on the refereeing panel for the yeah. Men's Rugby World Cup. Very Bravo. Cool. Bravo. Yeah. To Joy. Well deserved. And I think the reason for that, obviously, we need referees Love for the them. game yeah. to grow. <laughs> I get so much heat about this. <laughs> Have you yet? ref yet, Mo? No, not yet. No, she's not done <laughs> that game. We're working <laughs> on the game. game that Mo will ref, that the refs will play I got, in. I got an email the other day from Brum, and the title was Mo in the Middle. Is <laughs> <laughs> <Was> it? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming, it's coming. It's coming to a screen near you very, very soon. We're cooking it up. But the point with Joy be representing on a stage that big because it does just have so many eyeballs on it and it is for a lot of people the gateway that gets them into rugby is the Men's Rugby World Cup is the massive visibility like for nine-year-old girls who will be watching rugby for the first time in their lives to see a woman involved in like almost any way but particularly in an authoritative role um, is a massive moment so congratulations to Joy Neville big ups from all of us. And from France to the Southern Hemisphere, WXV1 will be hosted in NZ, where we will see England participate, compete. Um, but the one that I'm really excited about is Cape Town in the autumns. What's really great about this for, I'm sure for everyone, but I think particularly for WXV2 teams, is the opportunity that a lot of these sides in this lineup now has to not only play in the first half of the year, but also to have something really big to kind of build towards in the Northern Hemisphere autumn. So six team tournament matches being played across the weekends of the 14th, 21st and 28th of October. Yes, that overlaps with the Men's World Cup. Scotland, Italy or Spain, likely to potentially also be the USA since they might be the fourth placed Pac-4 team. One from Rugby Africa, Asia Rugby and Oceania Rugby. So best guess, South Africa, Japan, Fiji, USA, you guys, Scotland and Italy or Spain. Which one do you want? Ooh. <coughs> Ooh. Italy or Spain? Italy. Yeah. Italy. Again? No. What's what? that? What's that? <laughs> you can both have an opinion. Uh, I think that? we've had more success against Spain, but I also really enjoyed our game against Italy. So I like the Italians. They're a good bunch. But they're a good fun. So actually, if we're talking... <laughs> that was just all about the social. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are we thinking about who we want to go out with at the end of the tournament? Or are we thinking about who we want to play? I'm not sure. Okay, so professional Rachel would say... Spain. 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 Only because we've been quite and successful. And Toulouse Rachel Spain. would say Italy. Italy. <laughs> like, Italy. Yeah. Yeah, so, no, they are fun. Yeah, yeah. they're good. When last, did you, ooh, when last did you tour to Cape Town? Would you like some tips? Have you got any Was thoughts, plans? Um, Nelly's actually... I'm a bit scared about going back. She's got some bad, bad memories so, from Cape Town. The only game I've ever missed for Scotland <laughs> was we were going to play South Africa. We had a two-test tour. Yeah. And um, we were actually roomies, weren't we? We were roomies. 
So we'd been out there for maybe like a week, everything was fine, and then go to bed the night before the game. And I'm like, I really don't feel good, but I'm just going to like see how I feel in the morning. I get up at maybe like 1am, I was violently sick, and then just couldn't stop. And I remember coming back through to the room, because I'd been gone a while, hadn't I? And you were like, is everything OK? And I was like, oh, I've just been a bit sick, like I'm not feeling great. And you were like, it'll be fine, everything will be fine in the morning. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. It wasn't, um, so fine. Yeah, it so wasn't fine in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> didn't play and then managed to get back for the second test. Yeah. But yeah. It was a sh it was a shame because it was we actually had a class time like got two wins against South Africa. Yeah. Like we had a real good tour. It was the first time we'd ever been to the southern hemisphere as well. Wasn't that your first ever tour? Uh yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. Mad. Were you in Cape Town or still in Bosch? Cape Town. Cape, Cape Town. Town. Yeah, loved it. It was, it was cool, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, but Purinelli was <laughs> She was not well. So, <laughs> game plan this time around, bottled Play. water, no yes. ice. Okay, yeah. Take it from me. Okay. Uh, okay. Stay the away from ice the ice. The ice is the one. The ice is the one that gets you. Ice is, is the one yeah, that gets because you. Because they just freeze the water, and then that melts in your drink, and you drink it. Bottled water, no ice. Okay. Go on. So, go on. Yeah, come on. <laughs> it's just the logic of, see, they, they freeze the water, and then the water, the ice melts, and well, becomes water again. According to you, it's the tonic. I yeah. ice it's right. the tonic. I stand by it. The according tonic to you, it's the tonic. Every time, I swear to God. Yeah. Also, no tonic. Right. Basically, I got really ill that one episode, and it was the tonic, I we swear to yeah. yeah. You had to make a runner during recording. It was like, awful. It wasn't just a 1am problem. No, tonic. <laughs> <laughs> no, not for now. Go on. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I was really poorly even driving home that day, which is why I think I know it wasn't just... It wasn't the alcohol. It wasn't the ice. Because you're right, alcohol that. doesn't have that effect for a whole not day, Not until, does it? like, 5pm <laughs> that evening. Must have been the ice. Yeah. Mm. I'm not and sure what it was. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> we okay, on. tips for Cape Town. <laughs> okay. those, would just, they, those would literally just be my 5p. And also, just have a whiskey every day. Every day. Oh. Why? Um, it... So my sister-in-law works for UNICEF and has spent many years in places like Afghanistan and Somalia and, you know, failed states the world over. Um, and when they're in places with dodgy water supplies, they just tend to have basically a whiskey every day because it does help just your gut. Do you think we can get that on my like, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. 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 well, I mean, surely when Scotland <laughs> is in hygiene, camp, these the are program. like yeah, all of the just things. Yeah, we drink whiskey every day. I mean, yeah. I'm brewed <laughs> whiskey. Avatar we saw bottle, the video actually. that Sarah Bonner and Jade Conkle made about their time at Harlequins. <laughs> I mean, very good. it's the little, what are those little... It was so funny the oh, other day. Tannics, tea cakes. Yeah, tea mm. cakes, iron brew. Delicacies. Little like. classics. The other day, obviously, when that announcement came out, um, obviously it was on social media, so we were just sat in our team room and all of us, we kept hearing bagpipes constantly from like Scottish <laughs> corner. We were like, girls, Scottish can you corner. give it a rest? And they were like, no, 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 we're not just playing the bagpipes. We we're actually watching this Instagram. And we were like, jeez. Yeah. So, your, so your team room tunes aren't bagpipes dominated either? Sometimes. Oh, no, we, we, yeah, have we, do, we do enjoy the bagpipes. Yeah. We quite often have a, a Scottish changing room here. Yeah. So actually some of our best pre-match hype is, is often... Yeah. Maybe kind of when you all resign and it's the whole Scottish team, we could have like a bagpipe version of the same video. <laughs> do Kaylee. Yeah. yeah. We, we often have Kayleys on our nights out yeah. here at Loughborough as well. You could do Adele, but on a bagpipe. <laughs> that is my dream. Have you dream. ever done a Kaylee? <laughs> that is my dream. Do you dream. know what we're talking about? <laughs> that was clip then. There we go. Yeah. That's yeah, what that we're talking about. Malcolm's okay. team too. <laughs> Just a bit of Adele, but on the pipes. Okay. Yeah. What is the Kaylee again? You, you describe uh, it. Kaylee's... We can show it. Should we show it? We can show Kaylee. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Just move it out. Here we go. I'm I Don't love the like it. It's what is it? Like, it's an English version of like a barn dance vibe. It's a like, Scottish but version. But it can't be English if no. the Scottish yeah. are doing it. Yeah, I don't know, but I was Scottish doing an English version. version. I'm really bad at being the boy. You would have to do that. Yeah, I can okay. do that. Okay, come on. Go on. Right, on be gender neutral here, girls. <laughs> <laughs> here. Yeah? Do you want a little... Yeah, okay. yeah. we're being... We, we, we might want to start the room. So we go forward to... I think that this would go down a treat with my people. I would just like to put it out there. When they start like singing in Guijo, then you guys just say, okay, we're going to do the Kaylee now. Everyone do it with me. Yeah. We actually, at Loughborough, we rented out our students' union and had a Burns night. Yeah. And yeah. we, each of us Scots, took on a song each and taught them all the dances. 
Love that. Very good. There's different dances. Oh, yeah. There's loads. <gasps> Moves. My That's like the easiest either. one to just... Oh, we'll have to make sure. That's the entry level <laughs> podcast. The <laughs> gateway <laughs> one. Just the one that we, we get people hooked in with. Yeah. Um, speaking of gateways and getting people hooked in, uh, big update. We're on the road at the start of June for the Battle of the Sharks. Or do you call it the Battle of the North? Is this quite... Technically, is it's the North. When we go and watch DMP Sharks against Sail Sharks. Yeah. Is that the North? Yeah. yeah. That qualifies? Yeah. Okay. But do you want to call it the Battle of the Sharks, rather? Because um, it's a lot of fun. And I come from a place where we like to call teams after animals. Yeah, go with Sharks then. Why not? Battle of the Sharks. Okay. On the final Prem 15 league weekend of the season, before the playoffs, we're doing a live show in partnership with Vodafone, uh, since they are also DMP Sharks sponsor. Uh, so we will be at the Darlington Arena on Saturday, the 3rd of June, pre-game. Uh, keep an eye on our social channels for tickets. Um, you are going to be elsewhere. I think we've got Saris at home. Ah. Mm. GH? Last round? Last round, Exeter at home. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Big game. Big game. There we go. Yeah. They got you've beat got, today. Yeah. yeah. You've got Quinn's next. Quinn's next. Then Sail Sharks. And Big then, run in that, Mo. Yeah. Look at that. Beefy. Yeah. Do you think you'll still have a home semi? Scars. <laughs> You can't touch wood on something like that. <laughs> yeah, we hope so. I think it, a lot of it might come down to, yeah. I think Exeter still have Bristol, so I think that could be quite tasty. Yeah. And obviously we've got Quinns. Like, you know what it's like. Everyone comes after you, don't they? Um, but we think that the Exeter game might be whoever wins that would get fourth place. Mm. And then obviously the You're other person. playing them at home? We're playing them, yeah. yeah. I'll pass, hopefully. Yeah. At, oh, home. Not, not home. at home, home. <laughs> 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 okay, so you guys are going up to DMP on Saturday at two. So yep. uh, go warm it up for us <laughs> and then uh, tell everyone you come across to return on the 3rd of June. Uh, I'll be wearing red, surprise. Um, <laughs> 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 but Skaz won't. <laughs> so she won't be there and she, she wears purple exclusively. Um, Thank you so much for joining us, girls. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. Thank you for doing the Kaylee for us. Oh, anytime. That was yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That, that, Love that's that going to be like the big hitter now. <laughs> yeah, that needs yeah. to be a gift All right there. Scotland. We Thanks might need it. to analyse our performance. We yeah. don't want to get him. Um... <laughs> no, Next time we want Adele on the bagpipes. Yeah, I need to find a, <laughs> find a way to make that happen. You say that. Yeah. Your that, eyes. That is, that is that. my two favourite things just put together there. Put together. Never heard it before, though. Need to make it happen. I'm sure it's got to be out there on the internet somewhere. Mm. Some some Scot in a faraway land has definitely had time it's to learn it. Red Hot Chili Papers. Red well, Hot Chili yeah. Papers must have yeah. it. I reckon so. Oh, yeah. yes, that's mm. true. I've heard about them. Okay, bro. Uh, it was <laughs> lovely to see you, Mo. Yeah, lovely to see you too. Thanks for having me. Um, and good luck with the ankle mobility. Not so much golf, eh? Yeah, less golf. Less golf. For the yeah. throat as well, I think yeah. I need less golf. More pool noodle slapping. <laughs> yes, okay. Yes. <laughs> We've been the good, the scars and the rugby. Brought to you uh, by our friends at Vodafone. This is a Folding Pocket production produced by Shira Kilgallen.